Hey, what's up guys? Andrew from American Musical Supply here. I'm here with Ben from Ableton, who's going to be talking to us in this video about Ableton's new life pack that allows you to incorporate control voltage into your Ableton setup. How are you doing? Really good, how are you? I'm well, thank you. Excellent. So can you tell us a little bit about, this seems like an exciting development because it's, it's, it brings the ability to bring modular and semi-modular synthesis along with computer sequencing together and all inside of your software, is that correct? Absolutely, okay. so control voltage um, has had a huge renaissance in recent years. It's a really, really old technology. It's kind of what we used to use with synthesizers before MIDI, mm -hmm. but it's come back into vogue thanks to all these semi-modular and modular synthesizers that have entered the market in recent years. So now the CV Tools Live Pack will allow Ableton Live to create this control voltage okay. as well as to read it and understand kind of the language all these synthesizers speak. Gotcha. Now we were also talking a little bit earlier when you were explaining something, some of this to me, uh, we were talking about there are some things that you need in order to make this work functionally. Like it's yeah. not like you can't use any, just any straight audio interface or anything, right? Yeah, well, so, um, so CV is is literally direct current. Okay. Um, so what you need is you need an audio interface that's capable of sending DC voltage out the outputs and reading it in the inputs. Okay. Not every interface can do that. However, this Universal Audio Apollo 8X that we're using today does. Okay. So we can use this uh, to literally read all of the CV created by the synthesizer um, and send it right into the inputs and outputs as though it was audio. Okay. Now, I just also want to make a note that um, all of the Universal Audio, all of the current production Universal Audio Apollos, that includes the twin, are a, do have DC coupled outputs, so they're all able to uh, have this functionality with control voltage. Not every interface does, though, so it is worth doing some research to make sure the interface you have or an interface you're thinking about has this functionality built in. Right. Okay. And then in terms of synthesizers, what are we using today? Uh, so this is an Arturia Mini Brute 2S. Okay. Yep. So it's a semi-modular. It's mm -hmm. got a little sequencer built into it here. Um, and it's a monophonic synthesizer that has this nice patch panel here that lets us kind of create all sorts of interesting routing options for modulation to make the synth sound more expressive. And it's super useful for us because we can use all of these inputs to send up to eight ins and eight outs worth of control information from the Apollo. Okay. So we've covered uh, the gear that we're using here today, but can you just talk us through how it's actually, how does it work? Like how do we cable this up so that I can get uh, control voltage out of the Apollo and into the, uh, the Mini Brute 2S? Sure, yeah. so first things first, when it comes to CV, uh, if we wanted to play this synthesizer or sequence it from inside of Ableton Live, we would want to send out two different CV signals. The first one is our pitch control signal. In this case, we're going to send that out output one here on the Apollo, okay. and we're going to bring that right into the pitch input right here on the Mini Brute. The next signal we need is our gate signal, and this tells the Mini Brute when to start and stop a note. So we're gonna take this signal out, output two on the Apollo, and bring it right in here to control the ADSR envelope on the okay. Mini Brute. That's gonna tell the, envelope, the Mini Brute, hey, start opening up that envelope and let the note start. Okay. And just, we are also taking the audio out, the master output here in the back. And for convenience, we're bringing it right back into input one here on the Apollo. So okay. we've got the audio coming back in. That way we can record the synthesizer if we want. Okay. Okay. So, so then, now, now that this is wired up, the next step yep. would be to grab uh, the, the first of the CV Tools devices. Okay. If we come in here to our browser and we look at the CV Tools pack, there are three categories. There's instruments, modulators, and utilities. Mm -hmm. And here in the instruments pack is this CV instrument device. I'm gonna drag and drop this onto a MIDI track and it's gonna load up. And once it does, mm -hmm. what it allows me to do is it lets me do some routing right here. So it lets me send my CV gate and my CV pitch signal out whatever outputs I want. I see. Now, this is kind of important because you don't really want to listen to CV. It's not good for your speakers and doesn't sound very musical. 
But what I can do right here is say that I would like to take that CV gate signal out my external outputs, mm -hmm. and then I'd like to route that to output two, which is what I had plugged in here in the Apollo. Yep. And for my pitch control, I want to do the same thing, an external output out to output one. Okay. Now, I also want to take audio back so we can listen to it. And there's an audio from section built into the device right here. So I'm also just going to say external input and input one. I see. So that's now, all happening on one track. Exactly. Okay. I haven't needed multiple tracks. All on this one track, I have this one device that's going to send the signals out that I need and bring the sound back in so I can start to record it, affect it, and play it. Gotcha. So now that this is done, So what's happening there is you have MIDI information from here that's being translated to control voltage. And exactly. Then, okay. I'm able to play push or you know any sort of keyboard MIDI controller, uh -huh. send that MIDI into live. Uh, it goes onto this MIDI track here in live, and live sends it to the CV instrument, which converts it into that control voltage that's needed to talk to this synthesizer okay. and get the audio back. Now, now that that's happened, uh, I can start to sequence my, my song ideas right inside a live. Um, I can play it back. Um, I have a clip here that I recorded ahead of time that I could just hit play so we could hear sure. a little something that's pre-recorded. And then, so even while that's playing back, I can actually manipulate the filter. And Absolutely, like yeah. Here. You can dive right in and start okay. tweaking the sound as it plays. Now, this CV instrument device, it has a lot of other functionality built into it if you want it. Mm -hmm. If I press this little arrow right here, it'll expand the device out. And I can do things in this section like uh, set up envelopes to control different parts of this synthesizer, uh, or even create things like LFOs to control parts of this synthesizer from right inside the CV instrument. Okay. And the important thing is also, once you have all this wired up and configured and set up just how you like, you can save it as a preset right here so that later on when you want to come back and use this setup again, you just drag and drop this back into a live set and it remembers all of the routing and settings that you've made. Okay. So we've established the basic connection now. We have pitch and gate information being sent from Ableton to our synthesizer. What are some other things that we could do uh, creatively with this with the CV tools? Sure. So you know the fun of all these synthesizers is being able to change the sound of them over time and mm -hmm. not just the melody and the rhythm. So uh, let's go ahead and control the filter. This uh, this Arturia has a really unique filter design. So let's change that filter over time and make the sound a little more interesting. Okay. So there's a if I look at the CV tools modulation section, there's an LFO CV tool device built right in here. And when I drag and drop it into Live, uh, it works just like the other LFO inside of Live. Um, it gives me a built-in LFO that I can map to any parameter that I want. But the CV Tools edition of it also lets me send this, this LFO out as CV information. Okay. In this case, I'll send it out output 3 on the Apollo. Let's take output 3 and patch it into the synth, and let's plug it into the filter. So the filter input is right here for the cutoff. And so now, if we hit play, this LFO shape is going to open and close the filter over time. So we might want to control the depth a little bit so it doesn't open up too far. We might want to find maybe we make that a little faster or put it in time with the rest of our song. So now we got that sound moving a little bit more. Right. We're creating a signal here on the computer and sending it out to control the synthesizer. Um, we can also we can also go the other direction though. So if we want, this synthesizer has two LFOs built into it. We haven't even had to use those yet because we're using an LFO in the computer. But hey, maybe you're doing something really interesting with the LFOs on your synthesizer and you wish that could control the synth but also control something inside your computer. Uh, you don't have to just send CV information out of Ableton Live and out of the Apollo with the CV tools. You can bring CV back in to control control Ableton Live from your synthesizer. So I'm going to take the output of the LFO, and we'll just use LFO1 here on this. 
And I'm going to plug it into one of the inputs here on the Apollo. Let's just go for input two. There we go. And now what I want to do is go back into my CV modulation folder here, and I'm going to grab the CV in device. And we'll just add this to the track. Now my CV in device, it's going to look at any CV signal coming in this input, but I need to tell it what input to look at. So let's go for external input two. And uh, I want to just tell it that at the moment it's looking for a pitch signal and I want to tell it, you know, we're not sending it pitch, we're sending it an LFO. And so as soon as I switch from pitch over to DC, immediately we can start to see this LFO shape appear here. Now, this is kind of cool. It's worth focusing on this for a second. This LFO shape we're seeing, that's this real physical analog LFO built into the synthesizer. So okay. if I come over here to the synth and I change the speed, you'll see that LFO change its shape and speed as well right there. And so once I have the CV signal coming in, I can map it to anything I want. Like, the sound might be really interesting to have something like a phaser or a chorus on it. So I can come over to my audio effects and grab one of those right out of live's audio effects. Uh, let's go for the phaser. And now that I've got the phaser loaded here, um, it might be really fun to control this frequency control. If I want to do that, all I do is hit the map button and map it to that control, and now, this LFO on my physical synthesizer is controlling this virtual parameter inside of my software. Gotcha. So it almost makes this phaser device like a little extension of my synthesizer. Mm -hmm. This can also work for anything that you can map inside of Ableton Live. So that's all the parameters of all the devices inside of Live. That's also all your third-party plugins, your VSTs and audio units. I think actually too, one thing that's really cool is how all of this is happening on one track. Like I think it's really yeah. important to like point that out. Because it's not like you're having to create a bunch of different tracks inside of the software and like keep track of where they're all routed. Like you can you can nest this all in one track. I think that's the really idea clever. is to keep it all really tidy. Right. This whole world can already get really confusing mm -hmm. and you can start to have a lot of wires plugged in at once. So whatever we can do to sort of keep things clear right. and, and tidy inside your DAW, we think is really, really useful. Um, so let's hear that for just a second. So now I've got this filter, this uh, some filter action. I've got a phaser being controlled by the speed of this LFO here. Cool. So. In this particular case, we've done all the sequencing from inside of Ableton Live so far. Mm -hmm. However, um, this, this synthesizer does have a sequencer built into it. And I don't think that's uncommon. It seems pretty normal these days that you might want your computer set up to be able to talk to the sequencer inside your hardware, or vice versa. You might want your sequencer hardware to be able to talk to Ableton Live. Mm. Um, there are a couple of devices built into the CV Tools pack designed to really simplify that. The first is this clock in device, and there's also a clock out device. Okay. Uh, let's start off with the clock out device just for a second, and we can show you how to sequence, uh, how to sync your external sequencer with Live's clock. So I'll just take this device and drag and drop it into my project, mm -hmm. and it's going to make a new track for me. I can keep it on the same track. This device doesn't actually send out any audio at all, but just for housekeeping's sake, I'll put it on a new track. Sure. And it has out, uh, routing controls built right into the device here. So I'm going to say, let's send clock out, oh, I don't know, let's do output 8. OK. So now we'll send clock out output 8, and that can go right into our Arturia. We'll take output 8. And in this case, on the Arturia synth, um, the sequencer section here has a clock input right here. We're going to plug that into the clock input on the Arturia. So we also need to change the sync here to be clock. Exactly. Okay, so now we should start our sequencer or? Sure. Yeah. Now, one thing to look at here, there's a couple cool things. First mm -hmm. of all, you can already see now that the tempo on the Arturia synth matches the tempo coming out of live. It's already receiving sync. As soon as I hit play, we start getting sync information right here. So the clock is coming out of output eight, and the the uh, the mini brute is already listening to this clock. 
Now, if you wanted to also synchronize your start, the clock out device also has a separate output here for transport out. Okay. We could use another output here for transport out. And if we plugged that right into the reset control right here, okay. uh, that would automatically, that should automatically start this for us gotcha. so that we, uh, we don't even have to worry about hitting play on both of them at the same time. Okay. They play for us. Right. Okay. Now, the flip side to this would be, hey, maybe you've got something cool happening on your external sequencer and you'd like Ableton Live to follow its tempo. Exactly the same way I can use the clock out device, I have a clock in device here. The clock in device, uh, we're gonna need to use an input, but in this case, what I would do is take input, oh, let's do input eight. We'll take our tempo here from our external input, input eight. And in this case, we would want to make sure that the sequencer on your external hardware is set to internal so mm -hmm. that it's creating clock. Yep. And right here on this sequencer input, we're going to want to take the sync out. And so now when we hit play here, this is going to generate a clock and send this clock out here. Now in this case, I just need to adjust the threshold a little bit to make sure it's getting the right amount of level uh, out of our synthesizer. And once I do, now we can see it's receiving the clock right here in live. It's detecting the tempo from the external sequencer and it's automatically setting live's tempo to match and follow that tempo. So, so now um, anything we do, any tempo changes we make here, uh, live is gonna detect them and follow along with them and play along. Control voltage is all about getting to create really interesting and sometimes unexpected interaction between different parts of your synthesizer. Um, so before we used this LFO to control the filter on the synth, but it might be really interesting to use some other part of our music. So I'm just gonna turn this off for a second because um, I don't think we need to hear all this for just a minute and let's just get it back to the simpler synth sound. That's a pretty aggressive filter sound. Um, let's come over here to our drum track and I've got a drum loop here. And here on the drum track, we've got our envelope follower device. So the envelope follower, it's gonna listen to the incoming level of the drums. And then if I send this out, external output three, and we patch the third output here on our Apollo into the filter cutoff input, we can set it so that the drum beat itself controls the filter here on the synthesizer and opens and closes it. Gotcha. So then my, my filter can kind of bounce open and close along with the drums. Let's hear that together and see how it sounds. So the envelope follower device is tracking the input incoming signal. And so I can adjust the gain, which is gonna increase kind of how much the drums we track here. If we turn this way up, we're gonna open up the filter a lot. If we turn this down, the filter's barely gonna open. Um, but I can go through and kind of dial this in to get just the right amount of kind of interplay between my drums and my synthesizer, synthesizer to make these two sound fun together. But I think that really ties those two together. It really helps make the, the melody that you've got going on here kind of lock in in time with the drums. And it really takes advantage of what is so fun about all this control voltage, this ability to mix and match different parts of your song and get them to influence each other and make your, your synthesizers feel more musical and more alive. So we've covered a few of the possibilities available with CV tools. What are some other, uh, some other things that people might be able to get into with this uh, software package? Sure. The, it can kind of get pretty endless. <laughs> There's a few other devices built in here. We've got things like uh, a device specifically designed to control analog percussion devices. Uh, there's a rotating rhythm generator that can be fun to use even if you don't have any CV gear. It lets you kind of create some algorithmic and Euclidean rhythms uh, even with your, your MIDI tracks. Mm. Uh, there's also devices to create more complex modulation shapes, things like a shaper tool to let you draw in and create your own complex LFO shapes and utility devices to um, to combine different CV signals together to make more interesting and complex ones. But I think really where the magic comes from all this is suddenly 
um, all of the parts of your synthesizer can easily be controlled in the software world, right. and vice versa. Suddenly, every part of Ableton Live can become kind of an extension of your synthesizer. So uh, if you love your synth and you just wish it had one or two more LFOs, suddenly you have an infinite number of LFOs, limited only by the number of outputs you have built into your audio interface. Or if you love your synthesizer, but you wish it had uh, a reverb that you could manipulate and experiment with, suddenly every reverb plug-in and effect in your computer can be used uh, as sort of an extension of your synthesizer and controlled by your synthesizer. Gotcha. Cool. Well, if you're interested, if this video has inspired you at all and you're interested in exploring uh, integrating control voltage more into your setup, maybe you don't have Ableton Live or maybe you have Ableton Live and, and uh, an Apollo but no synthesizer and you want to go the modular route or the semi-modular route, head on over to AmericanMusical.com and you can check out all of these uh, pieces of equipment, the Arturia Mini Brute 2S, the Apollo X8, and the uh, Ableton Push, along with the Ableton Live suite software. So Ben, thanks so much. This has been very, very informative and educational. Hey, really thank you. It. It's been great to see you. Likewise.